Hello, this is Jared Nimi with a uh, mini lecture on mixed effect models. This lecture is really a continuation of the previous mini lecture that discussed hierarchical linear models. And we commented then that uh, these, these terms, mixed effect models and hierarchical linear models and multi-level models for that matter, are really um, uh, synonymous. So, in this particular mini lecture, we're going to be going through uh, a particular example of measuring these uh, seedling, I think it's actually seedling heights, but uh, either way, seedling weights or seedling heights, uh, and we're going to be showing how to write the model down in many different ways, and talking a bit about which, when each of those model constructions is useful. Alright, so let's start with the motivating example. Ah, so they were weight. Okay, so this example is taken from a colleague, Dan Nettleton. Uh, the idea here is that you have uh, corn, that's maize, uh, and you have two different genotypes, genotypes A and B. Uh, for each of the genotypes, you're going to plant nine seeds into each of four trays. Right, so you have four trays for each genotype. In each tray, there's nine seeds. So you have eight trays total. And we're going to put these in a growth chamber, and it's pointed out that these were randomly positioned in the growth chamber. We're going to wait for three weeks after the first seedling has emerged. And then we're going to uh, harvest all the seedlings from all the trays and weigh them. All right, so the, for the purpose of, we've talked a, bit, a bunch about uh, dealing with uh, missing data. And we've talked about when and when uh, it's not appropriate to assume ignorability. Uh, it's not clear at all here that the... Um, the missing data mechanism here is ignorable, but we're going to, for the purpose of this analysis, assume that it is ignorable. All right? And the idea here is that, um, all right, here, let's just show the picture. So here's a picture of, of the data that we're actually going to observe. So each of these squares is a tray of seedlings. In each of these trays were planted nine seeds. In each tray, you have a single genotype. So in this tray, this tray, this tray, and this tray, you have genotype A, and in the other four, you have genotype B. And you can see that what has occurred in this very first tray is that of the nine seedlings that were actually planted, only five of them ended up emerging within three weeks of the initial emergence. And so for this tray, we actually only have five observations, whereas this tray, we have nine observations. All right, and so what I was trying to get to on the last slide is that just for the purpose of uh, talking about this data set today, we're going to assume that the reason for missing this is ignorable relative to what we're interested in. Um, and again, that's not at all clear that it is true, but bear with me. Okay, so uh, this is the data that we're trying to analyze, and we are particularly interested in the fixed effect of the genotype. Right? We're interested in how well does gene A versus gene B perform in terms of the seedling weight Presumably, higher weight is better because that means the plant is growing quicker or stronger or something of that nature. Um, and But we realize that there are probably going to be differences amongst the trays. In particular, because these are trays were located at different parts in the growth chamber, perhaps the medium, uh, the dirt that was in the tray, uh, was, was somehow different. And so we believe that there will be differences amongst the trays, but we're not really interested in those differences themselves just for accounting for the fact that those differences may exist. And so, therefore, we're going to end up here with a mixed effect model where we have a fixed effect for the genotype and a random effect for the tray. All right, so we're going to introduce the model, at least one way to write the model. And so we're going to introduce some notation here where y, i, j, k is the weight of the i genotype. So i here refers to the genotype. There's only two of them. It's a and b. Uh, j is going to refer to the tray within that genotype. So you have four trays within each genotype. And then K is going to be the seedling uh, within that genotype tray combination. So here we have NIJ um, seedlings. So for instance, in this picture right here, NIJ for this tray would just be five. Right? There's only five seedlings, or this one would be nine. Okay, so we have... Uh, I is the genotype, J is the tray within the genotype, and K is the seedling within the genotype tray combination. All right, so we might write down a model in this format. We have mu here is the overall mean. We have then a genotype effect. Well, we're going to have two effects here, one for genotype A and one for genotype B. 
we have a tray effect, and this is shown as a tray, a gene, a tray within genotype effect. So in total, we're going to have eight of these, and then we have a random, random variability uh, or measurement noise, if you will, or the two of them together in this E I J K. All right. So just to be clear, um, we have a fixed effect here for genotype gamma i. So in, in a non-Bayesian perspective. Uh, this is just going to be a parameter that we estimate. We have tau ij is a random effect, and so we're going to put a prior in it. We're going to assume all the trays are independent, but they all have a common variance. All right, and then independent from that, we're going to assume that there's some extra variability, uh, e i j k, and these are all going to be independent. This is for all seedlings with the common variance sigma squared e. Okay, so uh, that's the model written in one format. And now we're going to show how we could rewrite this model using the notation from the previous lecture where we had this generic notation, the y equals x beta plus z u plus e, where everything now is written in matrix notation. And in order to do that, we need to define uh, what our design matrices x and z are. All right, so x is going to have the following three columns. It's going to have a column of all ones. This corresponds to the intercept in the model on the previous page. This corresponds to mu, right? The overall mean. The second column is going to be a column that has ones if the sample comes from genotype A and zeros otherwise. And this corresponds to the gamma one term, which is the fixed effect for genotype A. Column three has the opposite. It has ones if genotype ones if the genotype is B and zeros otherwise. So this now corresponds to gamma 2 or the fixed effect for genotype B. Alright, it, it'll be clear here that this is not a uh, full rank matrix because uh, we can add column 2 and 3 and return column 1. Right. But at this point that's not a concern. All we're doing is rewriting the model we've shown already in this more generic mixed effect model notation. Alright, so Z then has 8 columns, right? There are 8 trays. And so we're going to have essentially one column for each tray. So the first column just says it's all ones if it happens to be gene type 1, tray 1, and zeros otherwise. So this is corresponding to the tau 1, 1 term. The second column is just the next tray, still with gene type 1. This is corresponding to tau 1, 2. And we continue this on until we get a total of 8, uh, where the last one is going to be ones if this happens to be the last tray, that is gene type 2 and tray 4, and zeros otherwise. All right, so uh, both of these design matrices are, are pretty simple. They're all just binary, uh, indicating in the first case whether it's genotype A or B, and in the second case which tray it comes from. All right, so here's then written down the notation for the model uh, that we have, where we have, uh, we've defined X, and X is a, an N by 3, so beta here is length 3. Uh, Z is N by 8, so U then is of length 8. Um, and we complete the model description with assumptions on a random effects u, and they're, whoops, they are independently normally distributed with common variance sigma squared tau. The errors are independently normally distributed uh, sigma squared e. Variance sigma squared e. All right, so the whole purpose of this slide is just to show how to write the previous model that we wrote down in uh, this generic mixed effect model notation. Uh, we could equivalently write this model down without having this column 3 here, and then column 1 would just be the mean for genotype B, and column 2 would be the difference between genotype A and genotype B. All right, and then we would have a full rank matrix X. Okay. Now, uh, we, we've shown here two different ways of writing down the models. Uh, the first one is the, the notation we sort of like uh, for just understanding, it's easier to look at that equation and see what's going on. This model is useful for any algorithm that, that relates to this structure in terms of finding parameter estimates. Um, and now we're going to write down a third way of constructing the model, and this way happens to be very convenient for programming the model in bugs or in jigs. All right, and so we're going to change notation now. We're going to have uh, yi is just a scalar. And this is the weight for seedling i, where i now goes from 1 to n. We have a total of n seedlings. 
And now we're going to introduce uh, this uh, function, if you will, gi, and this just returns the genotype for each observation i. Right? So each observation is either genotype A or genotype B, and so gi is just going to return a 1 or a 2. Alright, similarly we're going to have the same thing now for the tray, and here we've changed from what we did previously where we had a, a tray within genotype. Here we're just going to enumerate the trays from 1 to 8, and ti is then going to return the unique tray ID for seedling i. I say unique here only because it goes from 1 to 8 as opposed to going from 1 to 4 twice, once for each genotype. All right, so ti just returns the tray ID, GI just returns the genotype information. All right, and so then we can write down the model in this format, right, using almost exactly the same notation as before, where we have now an observation YI, and there's an overall mean mu, there's a genotype effect, so GI here just says which genotype effect should go in the model, and tau sub TI just says which tray effect should go in the model, and then again some random error term. Uh, the model then assumes that we have the error terms are independently normally distributed, mean zero, variance, sigma squared E, and our random effects for the trays, now T here goes from one up to eight, our IID with mean zero and variance sigma squared tau. All right, so this happens to be the way to write down a model that's convenient for plugging it into JAGs or bugs. All right, so uh, just to recap, all we've done here is to look at a particular example and show the many different ways that we could write down the model with the understanding that there are the different ways to write down the model are convenient for different purposes. All right, so uh, again, we have this general formulation for mixed effect models, and from last time we talked about this alternative formula, uh, formulation, where we basically concatenated the fixed effects and random effects into a, a single design matrix X and an unknown parameter vector beta tilde, and I guess it was X tilde. And now we talked in this particular mini lecture about a particular example, and here's the example where we have a fixed effect for genotype and a random effect for trays, and with the assumptions that we had assumed. And we wrote this down in many different ways, right? We wrote this down down here because it was sort of easy to think about, well, okay, here's the genotype effect, here's the tray effect, uh, add that to an overall mean plus some error gives you uh, the actual observation for a seedling in a particular tray genotype combination. Uh, we wrote it down in a different format that is useful for programming into bugs, where we now introduce these functions that return the genotype for observation i and the tray for observation i, where again, uh, the notation is slightly different here for these taus and these taus. Um, and we showed how we could write this model down in this mixed of the general uh, mixed effect model notation. Um, and we didn't talk about, but I'm going to talk about it right here, about how to then rewrite this model that we had. Uh, again, in terms of this uh, more generic uh, standard linear regression notation, uh, where we uh, row bind x and z, column bind rather, column bind x and z, and we row bind beta and u. Uh, and then here are the assumptions that we would uh, have assumed. We have some prior for a fixed effect for the beta component, a beta tilde, that's beta not sigma beta. And we have the prior that we've been assuming all along for our random effects. For u, that's 0 and sigma squared tau, and we assume that they're independent, and therefore you get a block diagonal matrix here with elements sigma beta and then sigma squared tau i, and we have our same assumption on our errors. All right, so the purpose of this mini lecture was just to show the many different ways with a particular example of how we could write down the model. And again, uh, this is sort of the main way we write down the model just for understanding what's going into the model. This we use for writing in bugs. Uh, this we use for any uh, algorithm that uses this formula. Um, this bottom one was the way that we sort of understood how a Bayesian thinks about fixed versus random effects, and in fact would probably be the way, uh, at least depending on how we write the algorithm, that we would estimate uh, parameters using an MCMC. Uh, we could use this construction. I'll probably show that later. All right, thanks.